Beloved in Christ, in this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this sacred space glad with our carols of praise. But first let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for unity within the church he came to build, and especially in the Episcopal Church in this diocese and in this country. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick in body and mind and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother, and all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life and into the fellowship of the citizens above. May the King of angels bring us all. Amen.
God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. When they heard the sound of Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the evening, the man and the woman hid from Yahweh's presence among the trees of the garden. Yahweh called to the man, where are you? I heard you walking in the garden, replied the man. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. Who told you of nakedness? Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I forbade you to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you put beside me. She gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then Yahweh asked the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman replied, the snake tempted me, so I ate. Then Yahweh said to the snake, because you have done this, you are accursed. Lower than the cattle, lower than the wild beasts, you will crawl on your belly and eat dust every day of your life. I will make you enemies of one another, you and the woman, your offspring and hers. Her offspring will wound you on the head and you will wound hers in the heel. To the man, God said, because you listened to your woman and have eaten from the tree which I forbade you, when I said you are not to eat from it, the earth will be cursed because of you. With painstaking labor, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will yield thorns and thistles when you try to eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread until you return to the earth, just as you were taken from it. You are dust, and to dust you will return. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The angel of God called Abraham a second time from heaven and said, I swear by myself, it is Yahweh who speaks, because you have done this, because you have not refused me your son, your only child, I will shower blessings on you. I will make your descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and the grains of sand on the seashore. Your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth will find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command.
prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. The people walking in darkness are seeing a brilliant light. Upon those who dwell in a land of deep shadows, light is shining. For a child is born to us, an heir is given us, upon whose shoulders dominion will rest. This one shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Strength of God, Eternal Protector, Champion of Peace. This dominion and this peace will grow without end, with David's throne and realm sustained with justice and fairness, now and forever. The zeal of Yahweh Omnipotent will accomplish it. The peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. Then a shoot will sprout from the stump of Jesse. From Jesse's roots, a branch will blossom. The spirit of Yahweh will rest on you, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and reverence for Yahweh. You will delight in obeying Yahweh, and you won't judge by appearances, or make decisions by hearsay. You will treat poor people with fairness and will uphold the rights of the lands downtrodden. Then the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with a young goat. The calf and the lion cub will graze together and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with a bear, their young will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like the ox. The baby will play next to the den of the cobra, and the toddler will dance over the viper's nest. There will be no harm, no destruction anywhere in my holy mountain. For as the water fills the sea, so the land will be filled with the knowledge of Yahweh.
the angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. Six months later, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a young woman named Mary. She was engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. Upon arriving, the angel said to Mary, Rejoice, highly favored one, God is with you. Blessed are you among women. Mary was deeply troubled by these words and wondered what the angel's greeting meant. The angel went on to say to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You'll conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus, Deliverance. His dignity will be great, and he will be called the only begotten of God. God will give Jesus the judgment seat of David, his ancestor, to rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will never end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have never been with a man? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Hence the offspring to be born will be called the Holy One of God. Mary said, I am the servant of God. Let it be done to me as you say. With that, the angel left her. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole Roman world, and the people were instructed to go back to the town of their birth to register. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David, Bethlehem, Judea, 
because Joseph was of the house and lineage of David. He went to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her delivery. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She put him in a simple cloth wrapped like a receiving blanket and laid him in a feeding trough for cattle because there was no room for them in the inn.
the shepherds go to the manger. There were shepherds in the area living in the fields and keeping night watch by turns over their flock. The angel of God appeared to them and the glory of God shone around them, but they were very afraid. The angel said to them, you have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, news of great joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in David's city, a savior, the Messiah has been born to you. Let this be a sign to you. You will find an infant wrapped in a simple cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in high heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom God's favor rests. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see this event that God has made known to us. They hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, 
and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
It is a great pleasure to have you join us this morning for the service of Christmas lessons and carols. If you are new or newer to St. Peter's, I bid you a special welcome, and I invite you to fill out the welcome card that is in the chat on this live stream so that we can get to know each other a little better. I invite you to join us every Sunday for worship at 11 a.m., a service of uh, readings and a reflection and prayers. Uh, at 9 o'clock every Sunday, we have a children's and family service that's lively and interactive that takes place on Zoom. And we have weekday prayers, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at 8.30 a.m., evening prayer Wednesdays at 5 p.m., and a night prayer or a compline on Sundays at 7 p.m. So again, uh, in this most unusual of Christmases, I am glad you're joining us here at St. Peter's for this service, and I wish each of you a Merry Christmas as we continue with the 12 days of this season. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent the Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.